Guitar practice session 11324. These are relatively sloppy practice sessions where I practice whatever I think I need to be working on, then give you a recap so you get an idea of what you're getting into. This, of course, being that recap, hoping the practice sessions help me to generate a routine, verbalize what I'm trying to learn to get it in my mind better, possibly provide information to others, possibly also providing for feedback if anybody sees a better way to do the types of things that I'm trying to be doing here. I do think presenting information, even if no one is listening, is useful because it helps us to kind of organize our thoughts more systematically than we might otherwise do when we're just doing it for ourselves. Therefore, if you want to make your own kind of lectures or practice sessions using these materials, we'll try to provide you with them, including the Excel worksheet. Don't worry about plagiarism. You can use it, adjust it, whatever you want to do. It's currently structured, however, from the perspective of playing the guitar, as though we take the guitar imprint the strings on the screen so that we have the low or heavy string on top, the one closest to the ceiling, top to bottom, left to right, same orientation as us behind the guitar. I'll flip my guitar around so it looks like I'm left-handed on the screen. So the play, what I am playing will line up as easily as possible to our Excel fretboard, which will line up as easily as possible to our fingering so that we can focus on where the relative positions are rather than spinning the guitar around till we get dizzy in our mind. So this time I start off by just doing a recap of what we're doing. We're gonna be in the minor key and uh, we're looking at what I would call mode number six, the Aeolian mode. We're still looking at the seventh interval. This time we're gonna be looking at the bottom strings. I think I only get down to like these three strings. However, goal, we wanna be able to find every interval that's gonna be, if we had any root on the fretboard, I wanna be able to find a seventh from it, every seventh, not just a seventh that is there. The way we can do that is we can basically take a note in the middle of the guitar and from each of these notes, we can figure out every position related to it that's a seventh interval. And then uh, we could shift that position in theory to any other place on the guitar. So that's kind of our project. As we do that, we will be adding the seven and also looking at the uh, triad to see how I can add the seven on top of a triad chord construction, minor triad in this case. And uh, if I can't get all three notes of the triad, I'll drop the five. If I can't get all three, the five, then I'll drop uh, the, the three. If I can't get the three, and that's gonna be our strategy. Before we jump into that, I give a quick recap. So I jump on over to the related modes. We talk about our overall project, which is basically that I'd like to be able to be playing in different modes. I want to learn the modes not by memorizing notes per se, although that would be cool, but I'm more interested in learning the relative positions that are movable. Therefore, I would like to be able to learn the modes in as systematic a way as possible so that I can apply them in a similar way to an Excel spreadsheet so that I can just see like the patterns and be able to move the patterns to any other scale and related modes. And I go through basically the system, what I, which I think is easiest to do that, which on a broad overview would be learn the patterns for the major scale and then learn the modes that are related to it, which helps us to build chords as well as longer chords than triad chords and helps us play in those other modes, which are in essence the same thing when we when we look at these modes and chord constructions of like the one, four, five. Then we look at the minor, uh, the main minor, which in relation to the major scale up top, I should have been up top, is the Aeolian. And we memorize it as compared to the major. And then we compare the other minor modes to it it's also useful just to note that the one, four, five of the major creates major chords. The one, four, five of the minor make minor chords, which is I would call like a major blues and a minor blues. Just playing that kind of one, four, five is useful and a really good exercise to practice with if you just want to practice all major chords and all minor chords, right? Uh, so in any case, we do that. I tell it like a joke. We're getting into political season in America with the elections coming up, so I'm trying to. And I wrote a bunch of like not great jokes, but I wrote a bunch of them. And now I'm, I've only got like a couple days left. So it's a little bit longer on the on the jokes, the bad jokes, but they're a little bit longer <laughs> because I'm trying to squeeze them in here. I don't want to lose the material, man. This is good material. I got to get it out there while I got the time. <laughs> so I have that. 
And if you don't like that, you can skip it. Don't let it bother you. I'm not trying to, if, you, if it's going to be, a, be, a, be a, a source of pain, too much pain, then uh, you could skip that if you want. And, uh, and then I, I jam around at the end in the key of, I don't really jam, I kind of talk about the key of A minor and playing like a one, four, five in the key of A minor, but thinking of it in terms of, and I go to this worksheet, like I could think of it in terms of I'm playing the one, four, five in the key of like Aeolian, which means that when I go to the four, I'm really playing something in the Dorian. So when I'm kind of noodling around, I'm, I like to think, I want to think about the difference of what if I stay in the same key as though I'm in Dorian versus going from the one, four, five, which would be the A minor, the D, and then the E minor, but it has a different like 9, 11, and 13 or whatever. So I switch when I go to the four, instead of playing the four, I switch down here and I go make it the one. So now I'm going A to the D and you'll see what happens here is that you get a pattern that's parallel, which I think is more bluesy kind of structure because in the blues, uh, it seems like the pattern, what we do is we switch from one to one to one instead of going to the one, four, five. So we're still playing a one, four, five, right? But instead of, instead of me playing Aeolian, Dorian, Phrygian, which would be all in the same key, it seems like we're playing Aeolian. And then when I go to the four, I'm playing the D Aeolian minor scale. And then the, the, the five is I'm really going to the E minor scale. So everything's kind of symmetrical. So you have that kind of really uh, like the same pattern in different keys sound versus uh, if I was to play the one, four, five from Aeolian to Dorian to Phrygian, which has slightly different notes, which I kind of play around with. So that used to drive me crazy. It's still kind of interesting to kind of play around with those two ways that you can go from the one, four, five. I can go to the one, four, five by switching from minor scale, minor scale, minor scale when I go to the four or five or go to the one, four, five, keeping the, the, diff the Dorian and Phrygian modes and maybe even kind of play by going in between those two, do, you know, so that you have a little flexibility between, between if you're noodling around. So I was messing with that. Today, we're continuing on with the minor scale, otherwise known as mode number six, the Aeolian mode. Once again, looking at the seventh interval of it, but this time looking at the bottom strings of the guitar, the ones closest to the floor, because we did the top strings yesterday, remembering that from the perspective of chord construction, the seventh is probably the most important interval beyond the three intervals used to create the chord, the triad chord of the one, three, five. So it's inherently useful for us to just be able to see what that interval is. But I want to keep on recapping in my mind the overarching picture. So I have that kind of in the back of my mind as I go into the weeds of looking at the intervals related to the seventh. For that, I'm going to go back to the related modes section. And what I want to do is be able to see all of the modes, be able to move through all of the related modes as seamlessly as possible and be able to look at the relative positions within each mode and construct a chord from each of those relative notes in each modal position. Not only a triad chord, but also a more complex chord that adds the 7, 9, 11, and 13. The way we're going to basically do that is to say, first, I learn the major scale as my point of reference, remembering that the major scale is just a mode. It's not really special from that perspective, but it is special in Western music in that a lot, it's the most popular mode. And therefore we can kind of pull it out as our focal point and make it the thing that we measure everything else against. So then we can have our relative positions, one through seven, seven notes out of 12. I'm looking at the key of C major because there's no sharps and flats that gives me a nice check figure, but I'm really looking at the relative positions, not memorizing the, the notes in a particular chord because I don't wanna to have to memorize the notes in every chord. I wanna memorize the shapes and the relative positions because those are transferable. So then uh, from there, I wanna know what chords I can create from each relative position I could memorize the one, four, five, the blues kind of progression is major construction chords for the three note triad. 
the, the two, three, and six are gonna be minor chord constructions and the seven is gonna be Locrian. That's great for when I'm playing in the key of a major key, but when I go to some other mode, such as like the Mixolydian mode, it's gonna have the same notes if it's the related Mixolydian mode, but we started counting from a different perspective and therefore uh, we have different relative positions from one through seven and therefore we can't just say the one, four, five are gonna be major versus uh, the two, three, and six being minor chord constructions. So I could try to memorize or think about how I can compare the relationship to any other mode to the base mode, my major mode, by saying, let me number the modes based on the major scale and give that an absolute mode number and system. So if I'm on the Mixolydian, for example, if I go to the major scale, the Mixolydian is the fifth. So when I think of the fifth, which is a major chord construction, I can really think of it as a Mixolydian chord. It's a Mixolydian modal chord. And, uh, and so, then, so then I can number this Mixolydian as absolute number five, which is just the relative position of the Mixolydian chord or mode compared to the major scale. And then if I do that, I can see that that is actually, if I start on the first, it's four steps away to get up to five, which gives me a formula to get the number of steps. The mode I'm in, five minus one, gives me the number of steps four. So if I go back here and say, okay, what if I want to figure out what the, what the sixth is on the Mixolydian in terms of do I make a major or minor chord? Well, I can take the Mixolydian if I know it's the fifth, mode relative to the major minus one is four and then plus six which would give me ten but there's only seven modes ten minus seven is three so i can say then the relative position to the major scale would be the third which would be a minor chord construction because i know the two three six are minor chord constructions beyond that i know that the third place is the phrygian mode which will tell me not only the three notes here, but also beyond that. So that's gonna be one thing that'll be useful for me to break out of just playing in the major key. Then I wanna know, well, what if I wanna add the seven, nine, 11, and 13, and not just have triads that I am playing? Well, the, how can I memorize that? Because those are not gonna be the same from the Ionian or the one, the four or five, even the blues notes are gonna have different seven, nine, 11, and 13. Uh, if we want to remain in the same kind of uh, scale. So how could we memorize that? Well, we can break out our modes into major modes and minor modes. And the major mode, of course, is the major scale, the Ionian mode. We look at all of the interval relationships for the Ionian mode, memorize those, and then look at what the difference is for the two other major modes or major chords, that being the four and the five, otherwise known as the Lydian and Mixolydian, which have a difference on the Mixolydian of the seventh and on the Lydian, the 11. And then we go to the minor. The minors are significantly different. So that's where we are at now. The sixth is the relative minor, the main minor. So, that, so we can look at the sixth, compare it to the major, and basically all of the intervals are gonna be, uh, all the perfects remain the same, and all the major intervals change to minor intervals except the major second, which remains the same. So that helps us to kind of do that comparison. It also helps to know that if I make the Aeolian, in this case, A minor, if I make the A the first and count through the circle of the chords from the perspective of the A, then it ends up that the one, four, five are all minors, which is useful because on the major, the one, four, five are major. And then if I go to the minor, I know that the, the one, four, five are minor. That's useful. But the two, three, and six are not going to be the other ones, right? Because I have to memorize that the two then is the weird Locrian one. And that gives me the three, six, seven are going to be the majors. Now, I'd like to be able to do the same kind of thing here, learn all of the intervals for the minor, and then compare the two other minor intervals to that main minor, which is gonna be from the perspective of the minor, the four and the five, from the perspective of absolute mode numbering systems, meaning comparing the relative positions to the major scale, the Dorian and the Phrygian mode two and mode three, which are gonna have one interval difference. So that's gonna be, that's basically our uh, project at this time. 
I'd also maybe on the minor scales would like to basically memorize the the relative modal positions, right? So I, I know that the I know that the you know the aeolian, the one of the minor is what I would call mode number six, meaning the sixth of the relative major, which is the aeolian mode. I know that the two, and then I know let's go to the four and the five. The four then is the other minor mode. So the fourth of the aeolian or minor scale is mode number two or relative position two of the major scale, which is the Dorian mode. And then we know the fifth of the minor makes a minor chord because it has a minor third. But beyond that, I know it's actually the relative third position of the major scale, uh, uh, which has a minor chord and is the Phrygian mode. I know that the sixth then is going to have a major, uh, a major chord construction for the for in relation to the minor scale, and it is mode number uh, four, which is Lydian. So it's the fourth position relative to the major. And I know the seventh of the minor is going to be a, a major chord construction, and it has a modal construction of the fifth. Its relative position to the to the major is the fifth. And remember, if I can't memorize that, I can do my little math, which is to say, well, what if I want to find what that seventh is? I can say, well, I'm on the minor scale, which is equivalent to mode number six, relative position six with relation to the major scale, minus one to give me the steps from the starting point is five plus seven, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. There's only seven modes. So 12 minus, uh, 12 minus seven is five. That gives me relative position five to the major scale, which is mode five, mixolydian mode the one that has the one three five a major third but it has the minor seven in it all right the other thing to kind of note as we focus in on this seventh is that the seventh with relation to the minor scale is good all the way through all the minors so if i play the one four five i have the same interval for the seventh so if i any chord construction i make on the one four five of a minor scale whether I'm playing the one, the four, or the five of the minor scale has the same, will have the same pattern that I can basically copy and paste like an Excel spreadsheet, the relative positions will be the same. And on the major scale, however, normally the major has a, uh, a 11 note away major seven, but the mixolydian is the one that's kind of like the minor. And that's why it's kind of bluesy in a way because it's the one that's kind of uh, kind of uh, going, it can go back and forth with that really important, at least in American rock and bluesy music, the seventh, which is kind of between you know the major and the minor. So it's it's useful to keep that in mind. So we're looking at the minor seventh, which applies to all of the minors, uh, the Aeolian, the Dorian, the Phrygian, the one, four, five of the minor, otherwise known as the uh, two, three, and six of the major, and it applies to the Mixolydian the major mode that we saw before, which has a major third, but a minor seven. Okay, so let's go back on over here. And so we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna go down. I think we were on the G last time. And then I kind of, I got in my head like broke and I had to stop. So let's go down here and let's do this one again. So we're gonna be on this G. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the interval for the seven, find where that is on, I wanna be able to find it on any note, if that's my root note, I would like to then find every seventh available of which there will only be one per string because there's only one note per string within a 12 note inter 12 note uh, octave. And so then if I do that, and then I can, if I do that like right in the middle of the guitar, then I should be able to rotate this note anywhere I want to any other place on the guitar and all the, the relative positions will be relative, shifting relatively the same, like an Excel spreadsheet, like we're on an Excel spreadsheet. The fretboard is an Excel spreadsheet. I know that bothers people because people don't think Excel spreadsheets are creative, but they're wrong. The Excel spreadsheet is the expression, the actual expression of the fretboard is best uh, express through an Excel spreadsheet. I hate to tell you, but that's how it is. Okay. In any case, now that I've frustrated people with that, I'm going to say, let's go up to the top. <laughs> let's, 
we're gonna go above it. So we're, we're looking for a 10 note away uh, minor seven. So if I go above it, then I need to find a distance that is the inverse, which there's 12 notes, 12 minus 10 is two. So I'm looking for a two note distance. So if I count this up, I would call this negative five, four, three, two, two notes away. So if I'm on uh, this G, that F, two notes away, pinky to pointer, top to bottom, two note away, major second, therefore bottom to top, seven note away, minor seven. I mean, sorry, 10 note away, minor seven. All right, what can I do with that? Well, there's an, a five right here, so I could arpeggiate the five. I could say, like, this is gonna be one, five, minor seven, one, five, minor seven, one, five, minor seven, one, five, minor seven. That's interesting. I also have a third out here, so I could do it like this. One, three, minor seven, one, three, minor seven. And then I have a third back here, which is kind of interesting. So then I have this, boom, boom. And then I'd have to reach up to that F, which is kind of a stretch. Not the easiest thing to play, but doable. Easier on a higher string, on a higher octave, I would assume. I have a third down here. Oh, man. So I could go like, we've got the G, we've got the F, and then I've got that one. It's kind of hard to reach that. Not bad. I'm muting the strings in between to get that third up there. All right, let's continue to the next one. So let's say that we go, oh, no. Let's say that we go up to this one. So this is the new, wait a sec. This is the new string that has been revealed. So we haven't seen this shape yet. So it's gonna be, if I go negative five, 10, uh, uh, 11, 12, wait, negative five, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, hold on. It would be negative five, 10, 11, 12, which I could bring back down to zero because that's an octave 12 minus 12 is zero and then two, one, two. So it's two note away. So that makes sense. So from here to here. All right. Is there anything I can add on that? I have, I might be able to grab if I can bar that. That's a tough bar because it's a stretch. I think there's a third I can kind of get that third right there <laughs> it's definitely not something I do quite often but that's kind of interesting might have to try to throw that in the mix let's go now let's go on the same string so if I go now I'm saying okay this would be if I'm on this string and I want to find the one on the same string, I could say, well, if I went up, it would be a 10 note away up, but that's a ways away. So I want to go behind it. How far back do I go? Well, it's going to be the inverse, which is 12 minus 10, which is two. So I just go back two. So if I went from F to G, that would be a two note away major second. G to F would be a 10 note away minor seven. All right. And then I could ar arpeggiate that. I have like a third underneath it, so I could go, I could go like one, three, minor seven, one, three, minor seven, one, one, three, minor seven, wait a sec, one, three, minor seven, one, three, minor seven, one, three, minor seven, what, one, one, three, one, three, minor seven. All right, I have a five, I have a, a five right here too, so I could arpeggiate that. One, three, five, minor seven. One, three, five, minor seven. One, three, five, minor seven. I've got a five up top here. So I could go like one, five. 
one five minor seven one five minor seven one five minor seven one five minor seven. I could do that. Okay. So let's go to the next one. Then down here, now I'm going below. So so now this should be the same shape I saw up top from D to C. Now I'm going from G to F. And it's going to be now 10 notes away. So there's five here, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten notes away. So that's going to be up to the 10. It's a bit of a stretch. What can I do with that? I can play like a minor blues pattern, which again, I haven't done much. But because if it was a major blues, you've got like this. You don't have that, but then you could stretch out to this. But see, I have this one now. So this is a power chord. And then I can stretch out to that seven. And that's kind of interesting because then I have the five here, so I have a five here, and I have a three here that I might be able to shuffle between and then take my finger off and pick up that 11. So I could be like. So it's fun. I, I, I think there's potential there to do something cool with that. Let's go to the next one. So now I've crossed the fault line. So when I was on this D up top, like when I was on the A, I had from the A to the G was my minor seven. And then when I was on the D, it was the D to the C. But now when I'm on the G, it's going to be the G shifting up to the F because of the kink in the, in the tuning because of the plate tectonic shift. So it went up from here to here. So this would be uh, five notes to here and then 10 notes up here this time. Okay. So there's that, what can I do with that? I have a third back here. So we've got boom, boom, and then boom. So I could play either of those fingers. Like this one better. So that's an interesting sound. I should do that more. All right, and then I've got a, I've got, I can't play that fifth here. I have a fifth up top, so we could do. there so that would be kind of like if I had my my D shape uh, what is it my D minor shape chord which would look like this you've got the this one and then uh, the G's up here and then normally down here so this would be the normal shape for a D minor, but then I, but then I take my, my finger here and pick my pick this finger up, and then I move this one up to here. Just go down to the last one here. So now this one, if I say 5, 10, 15, let's bring it 15, 14, uh, 13, 12, 11, 10. 
So I think this one was actually brought in a bit because of the kink in the tuning. So it's actually a reachable. So, and then I have a third right here. So it's kind of interesting. I've got my G shape looks like this, my G minor shape looks like this. Or my, yeah. Wait a sec. My G minor shape from here would be here, here, and then this one got pulled in to here. It would just be that. But then, I could reach back if I grabbed it this way. I could reach back to here. So I could be like... Might have to play with that a little bit. All right, okay. So let's do our, I'm gonna go up to now the C and I'm gonna do my joke here. I, politics season is, uh, is winding up and I wrote a bunch of jokes. Uh, so I have to get them out there before the, before the election happens here. So I have a few, it might be a little longer today. All right, so here we go. Uh, just practice jokes, somewhat political. So again, you, if you don't like the political stuff, you can you could fast forward here. But here we go. Practice session joke. Let me get my coffee again. One more drink. All right. America does not seem these days to like milk toast politicians. To be honest, I don't even know what milk toast really is, man. It must it must be something from way back in the day. Because I, I didn't even know you could make milk from toast, you know? I, I've heard of almond milk, soy milk, even oats milk, but I've, I've never come across in the milk aisle milk toast, you know? It's a little strange. But if you can make, if you can make vanilla flavored almond milk and sell that, you, you would think that jam flavored milk toast would, would work in the, in, the, in the milk aisle, possibly. Anyways... Maybe after the strange current political situation we are in, uh, we will one day go back to just plain old, get the job done, American pragmatist minded, hardworking, data driven, people loving, milk toast politicians. You know, I don't know. Until then, however, best to just sit back and enjoy the show, I guess. You know, maybe, maybe milk toast just can't stand up to the lies these days. Instead of politicians have to yell back. Like, like the stubborn booger you just can't quite reach, screaming, I will not go silently into that good night, you know? Anyways, have, have you ever noticed that the Kamala speech, a Kamala Harris presidential speech sounds, sounds like a Kamala square dance, kind of? I mean, seriously, she, she just calls out moves up there. She's like, we're, we're moving forward, not backward, upward not downwards, always spinning, spinning into the future, forward, forward, forward. I mean, it's honestly, it's like, as far as I can tell, like if you were to make, as far as I can tell, the standard Kamala Harris campaign speech square dance formula goes something like this, if we're going to break it down. Skip to the loo forward, skip to the loo backwards, reach up to the sky, Sit down to the ground, spin three times in a circle, then take three steps forward, 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 and then crash to the ground like a lemming falling off of the cliff of the economic cliff after that. That's going to be the dance. That's the dance move that basically it's like the chicken dance. You just, <laughs> you just tell you what you got to stand up, stand down, spin around. It's, it's seriously that. Uh, is it just me, or is, is there less substance in Kamala Harris's speeches than in a bag of chips after the Biden Harris's shrinkflation policies kicked in? You know, you're looking in that bag of chips, going like, "What is this crap? It's all air in here. There's nothing but air for crying out loud." 
the, the, the Harris campaign slogan should be like, why be jealous of others being a piece of garbage when you can be the whole dang landfill? We could be the whole dang landfill over here. We don't need to be jealous of other people being a piece of garbage. We can make ourselves into the biggest landfill ever. Anyway, all right, that's all I got for today. All right, let's go back to it. We're going to the, the sea now. Let's do this one. <laughs> All right, we're on the sea. So here's the sea. And so we're going to be looking. Let's go above it first. So what we've done now is the same relationship between these two strings should be the same. Same relationship between these two strings. And then we've added a new string, so a new relationship up top. And then there's going to be a different relationship between the bottom strings because when I was on the G, I had not hit the fault line right below it. Here we have hit the fault line right below it. And then there's going to be a different relationship between this string or, or somewhat the same relationship because when I was on the G compared to this string, I'm still crossing the fault line between those two notes. Okay, so so let's let's go above it first. So I'm looking for a 10 note away minor seven so it needs to be 10 notes away i'm going above it therefore i need a distance of the inverse which is 12 minus 10 or two if there's five notes between i'll call it negative five and then four three two so here's going to be it same relationship there so we have boom and uh boom and then so if i go top to bottom that's going to be a two note away major second bottom to top Seven, uh, 10 note away, I'm sorry, top to bottom, two note away, major second, bottom to top, 10 note away, minor seven. All right, what can we do with that? Well, same kind of thing. We've got the arpeggiating. We have a fifth right above it, like, like always, except when we're on the, you know, the kink and the tuning. So I could go, this is going to be one, five, minor seven, one, five, minor seven, one, five, minor seven, one, five, minor seven. And then I have a... Uh, my minor is down here now because of the kink and the tuning. Uh, my third is down here. So that's a little bit different, a little bit more difficult to reach, but not too bad, right? So we have, where's the, here's the, I'm over here. So it'll be one, three, minor seven. <laughs> one, three, minor seven. Wait a sec, that's not right. Minor seven, one, three, minor. Okay, hold on a second. I'm on the G. What? Why? I skipped up to the G. That's why. <laughs> one, three, one, three, and then I'm on five, six, seven, eight. One, three, minor seven. One, one, three, minor seven. Five, six, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. All right. Okay. Let's move on. Moving up, moving on up. Uh, by the way, I should be able to just... Why am I arpeggiating that? I should just be able to play that. And then reaching up to here. Alright, that's interesting. Okay. So that's a similar shape. It's actually easier to play than when it was up here because because I wasn't on the fault line, so this would have been back one. All right, that's actually doable. All right, let's move up. Uh, moving on up. So let's go to uh, this string, and I'm looking for a uh, two note away. So this would be negative five, negative 10, uh, nine, eight, seven, six. Wait, no, negative five, negative 10, 11, 12 brings me back to zero and then one, two. All right, so this is a two note away. If I think about it, like going in a circle to here. All right, what else can I do with that? There's a, there's a three right below it. So I might be able to pick up the seven and the three and the one by barring that. It's tough to bar. actually be easier to pick up that three right there which still is not easy 
So now I'm picking up this three. I'm muting the string. That's doable. Uh, but that's about all I can do with that one. Let's go above it to here and say, okay, now I need a two note away. So this would be 5, 10, 15, 15 minus 12 is 5 minus 2, which is 3 minus 1 gives me 2. So we're from here to here, two note away, uh, major second, bottom to top is going to be a 10 note away, minor 7, therefore. I have a uh, fifth, well, I have a third right below it here. So I could pick like this up. And then I have right here a fifth. So I could pick that up. So now I've got... I want to pick that up without... And then mute the strings underneath it. looks kind of like a major uh, D sharp but I'm looking at it from the perspective of C all right so that's interesting I have a fifth over here so I could go like boom 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 to mute these two, right? I'm trying to mute these two, which isn't that easy to do. But I could bar this and then pick up that, maybe pick up this fifth too. see what else we got what's on the same string so if I'm on the same string I'm looking for a 10 note away minor so I can't go up 10 12 minus 10 is the inverse so there's two on behind it so I could say from this a, a sharp to C two note away major second from C to a sharp is therefore a seven, 10 note away minor seven I can do my arpeggiating thing here so I know above it, I have a five. So I could say that this is gonna be a one, five, minor seven, one, five, minor seven, one, five, minor seven, one, five, minor seven. And then I have a three down here. So I could say this is gonna be one, three, one, three, minor, Seven, one, three, minor seven, one, three, minor seven. Noting the three is in a different spot because it crossed the fault line. So that's why it looks like it should be a major third, but it's a minor third back there. And then I have another five down here, which is seems somewhat convenient. So that would be one, five, minor seven, one, five. And then let's go to the next one. So now I'm going to go below it. There's a fault line here and I'm looking for 10 notes away. So now I've got it shifted up. This is going to be hard to reach this one because this is the one way out there. So it's five here, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's probably no longer reachable. So it's like, eh, it's, you could still reach it on those higher strings because when it was up here, it was like, it was like right there. But now when I'm down here, it's up to here. When it was, wait a sec, when it was here, it was there. And now when it's here, 
It's there. So I could still try my see my see my fifth now has shifted up too. So my fifth would be right there, which is quite a stretch. quite hard to play that little pattern there. So let's move on to the next one. So now we're going to say this is the same as the top one. If I move it up, it would be five and then 10. So that makes sense. So from here to here. Oop, there. All right. And so I have a third behind it here. Here's my little, sh my, my, my nice, easy little shape, which I can play like this. It's like an F shape, but it's part of this shape. It's part of the full uh, C minor shape. So if I was playing it like this, well, then I could maybe reach up here I was doing this. Oh, that's cool. So if I was playing this, pinky to do what I want playing that right there all right so that's that I have another fifth up here so I could go boom boom and then here all right that's interesting okay Let's move on. The next one, let's go to an E. Uh, wait a sec, yeah, let's go to the E, which is down, uh, that's a G, F, E. All right, so let's go here, and then let's go above it again. So now I've crossed the fault line, so now I'm in the plate tectonic shift. That means everything above it's gonna be possibly different, right? So like. The, the, dif the distance between this string and this string is not going to be different than this string. The shape's going to be different. And then when I went from this string to this string, uh, well, that's, and then I revealed a new string up top. So let's just think about it like that. So I'm going to say, okay, above it, then I'm looking for the inverse. So it's a 10 note away. Inverse would be 12 minus 10, which is two. So now this would be negative, negative five would be uh, negative five this way, five, four, three, two. So because of the kink in the tuning. So now, if I'm on that E, the D, top to bottom would be a two note away, minor second, bottom to top would be a 10 note away, major seven. Okay, and then what else do I have with that? Well, here's my, my like shape that I could play here fairly often, my minor shape. And then I can reach up maybe from that to here to get the seven. So I could say minor, this minor shape. What did it say? But then I'm losing. I want it. There we go. Getting a little 
tired here. I might have to stop. I'm going to have to... Let's just stop it here. I'm getting a little tired. I was going to mess around on the miners uh, because I was thinking like if I was playing in like an A minor and I go to the 145 145 then the two ways I can think about doing that which used to drive me crazy is to is the one to be in the, the one <laughs> I can learn a pattern which is kind of fun to play there but then when I go to uh, the the four so when I go to the four notice I can't I could play that ex exact same pattern like if I did this on the one I can't I could do that same thing down here and it should sound good but it might not be in the same key, in the same exact key, because now I'm I should be playing if I'm in the related key, the Dorian. So like if I was if I was up here and I was playing like, if I was like, doing, uh, here to to the to the C, and then I pick up everything in this box, and then I go back to the A, right? You would think I'd be able to do the similar thing when I'm looking at when I'm with the open. D, where I can play this, and then I can go up to the A, but notice this relate, the box is different, right? The F is now shifted up here. So now this is the key note that's kind of different between those two patterns. So like if I was doing this, and by the way, I'm also picking up this, this is a, the blues note, that's why I hit that one sometimes. When I go here, I can't hit this note if I want to stay in the same key. I'd have to go. But when you do when you when I do hit this note, it still sounds cool, right? So it's like And that means that you would think that instead of staying playing the Dorian, I could switch from the A major to the D, I'm sorry, the, the A minor to the D minor. So, so because if I was on the D minor, then the whole thing would be symmetrically moved. So now I have this shape in the same location. So those are the two ways. And that's what I think like, the my, like the blues kind of does more switching from the one to the one like in the majors it's switching from the one of the mixolydian to the one of the mixolydian it's like the one four five but you're really going from the one of the mixolydian to the one of the mixolydian to the one of the mixolydian because you're keeping that same minor seven whereas in the minor same kind of thing i could instead of going to the related dorian I go to the one of the the minor and then I and then I play the same and then I go to the f the four but I but I convert it to the one and then I go to the five and convert it to the one cuz then you get the same pattern and it's all like symmetrical. So uh, So there's a just playing this box so that used to drive me crazy because I used to think that you had to play because it's a minor chord that you'd be playing from a minor and then going to D minor which sounds good but then that's not actually what you're doing when you're in the same key which which is really what you're doing is you're going a minor to D Dorian so here's like the difference and just let me try to play the difference on that. Like if I was just doing my little jam thing, I'm gonna throw on the the the, the, the blue note, minor blue note, flat five. Now I'm 
going to do the symmetrical thing down here, go into the D minor, not the D Dorian. <laughs> Then what if I switch to, I go to from A minor to A Dorian, to D Dorian, to stay in the same key. That means that now on when I go to the D, I do the same pattern, but this note, instead of being like right next to it, is up here. So the difference is, like this note is here when I play the A, but when I do the same pattern down here, it's up here. So it's not going to sound symmetrical, but it's going to sound like it's in the same key, which is cool, but different. So it's like A minor, D Dorian. The symmetrical thing sounds cool because you can, this is like, so this is A minor with the, with the flat five, which is a pattern I like. And then D minor with the flat five. A minor. And then E minor, flat five. thing that kind of drives me crazy is a little bit is like could you still if I was gonna make this a D Dorian could I still throw in that flat five and does that sound cool even though I'm playing in a D Dorian right I think it kind of does but it's a little wonky because now because now you would think you wouldn't have the same blue note if you're in the Dorian you know so but like so here A minor with a flat five D Dorian with a flat five.